give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. His mercy <clears throat> endures forever. Good evening, good evening. Give me just one moment. We're going to get started. I was just sending out a message to a few people here. And uh, we're going to get started in just a minute. We got a good lesson from the book, the um, the book, the uh, Bait of Satan, what we've been talking about the last few weeks. I pray that this will be enriching to your souls as it is to mine to help bring a change in your life and the lives of others. God is so good. Every day he keeps on doing great things for us. And all we got to do is keep on trusting in him, keep standing on his word, and and watch God move in your life to break chains and shackles and bondages of sin off your mind and off your heart by the spirit of the living God. It doesn't matter what you're going through. God is in control of everything going on in our lives. And one thing about God, he loves us so much that the devil is defeated. God continues to reign and be exalted in all of our lives as we trust in him and stand on his word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Can you all hear me? Why this day we don't have no sign. There you go. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's open up in a word of prayer. God bless you. Pastor Denise and um, Deborah, God bless you all for joining us. Um, Terry, Aunt Terry, God bless you. LaShonda, God bless you for tagging in others in this lesson tonight. We're going to have a good time. I don't know about you, but this word has been really life-changing. Because the more you meditate on the word, the word, it, it has the ability to transform our minds to become more and more like Christ. The enemy thinks he has the upper hand on your life. He thinks he, he has the power to keep you in a spiritual prison. But I found out from studying the word of God, the enemy doesn't have any power over you unless you give him power. So the power you give him is the power he has to control you in bondage. But God has came to set us free by the spirit of living God. And all you got to do is walk in it, believe it, stand on it, and trust God at his word. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace upon us, O oh God, for another day. I thank you, O oh God, for this teaching tonight, O oh God. I pray that it be life transforming, God, life changing, that will empower the weak to be strong, empower the poor to become rich in Christ Jesus, that you, Lord God, would challenge us and provoke us to righteousness, that things in our lives that's offensive to you, God, becomes an offense to us, O oh God. God, to let go of it, even if it comes to people, Lord God, we separate ourselves from them because of the connection and the relation we have with you, Lord God, that nothing would hinder us from walking in the truth and the righteousness of your word. We ask tonight, God, you be glorified, be exalted, be lifted up, that you would get the glory out of all of this. And I thank you, Lord God, for every person that tuned in tonight, those who may even hear this, this recording later on, Father God. They will bless their hearts and change their lives forever. And we give you glory, give you honor, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Last week we were talking about in our book, The Bait of Satan, Living Free from the Deadly Trap of Offense. We we're talking about the heart, the true heart's condition. We started out with the true heart's condition last week. And one thing we found out that when your heart is filled with an offense, it's cloaked with pride. It brings you to a place of having a hardened heart. Your vision becomes dim. begin to, to lose your understanding. You get distracted easily. You get deterred from the plan God has from your life, for your life, because of offenses. And that's what the enemy does he doesn't bring anything that you're not familiar with. He presents things to you that he knows that you are able to be enticed with. So if someone is, can easily provoke you and you know certain individuals in your life 
that, that always, every time they come around, they have a foul spirit about themselves. They have a stinky odor about themselves. You need to let go of them. What I mean, I'm not talking about the fleshly stinking. I'm talking about the spiritual stinking. God said Nineveh. If you read the scripture in the book of Jonah, when God told Jonah, he said, the sin of Nineveh has come up, to, come up before me as a stinking odor. Sin stinks. Sin separates. Sin keeps you in bondage. Sin destroys you. And God says, when you allow the enemy to come into your heart to distract you from the vision God has given you, you've given him power over your mindset. So when he gets your mindset, guess what else he gets? He gets your heart. So you got to get to the place in yourself where you recognize the spirit of God who lives inside of you, who governs, rules, and guides us in the way of truth and righteousness. Jesus told disciples in this way. He said, when the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, or Holy Spirit, will come, he will guide you. Anyone that's guiding you is directing you. Just like we have the GPS. Think about it this way. When you decide to go to a place you've never been before, many cars have the, the GPS system already built in it. Some have a portable GPS system. Some have it on their phones, a GPS system, which is a global positioning system. In that system, when you set the address where you're trying to get to, it has directions that are come up in this GPS system to guide you through every avenue, highway, street, whatever it is, the direction to get you to where you're trying to get to. The Holy Spirit is the same way. <clears throat> when we allow the Holy Spirit to be the navigation system in our lives, Jesus said he will guide you into all truth and bring back to your remembrance the things I've taught you. But the problem comes in, we hear the GPS system giving instructions, but I feel I already know the way. So I don't have to listen to the GPS system because I know how to get to where I'm going. And the way you may be going may be a longer route than what the GPS system has offered to make it a shorter route to get to where you need to go. So I get distracted by my own pride, my own haughtiness, my arrogancy, my stubbornness, my rebellion. So I decide I'm not going to listen to the Holy Spirit's leadership. I'm going to do things my way. And your way is not necessarily the right way. So because of the heart's condition has been perverted by the enemy, it's distorted with pride. It blinds you with pride for your eyes become dim to truth. So God says, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof <coughs> excuse me, is the way of death. So if I follow my own leadership, my own way of doing things will lead me down a pathway that's not God's way he said, narrow is the road that leads to life and peace, but broad is the way to lead to destruction. So I follow in my own way. I want to go, which leads me down the avenue of failure, defeat, poverty, lack. And I find myself being separated from the will of God. I found something I want to read tonight. It's the six stages of spiritual heart disease. Six stages a spiritual heart disease. Today, because of the lack of cultivating health, healthy love in our hearts, many wander through life with severe heart conditions. Think about it. You keep eating a lot of greasy foods. What happens? <clears throat> I don't know what's going on in my throat. It begins to clog your arteries, right? Eat a lot of, a lot of junk in your body Garbage in, garbage comes out. So things that is not healthy for me, I begin to eat and gravitate to 
which causes me to find myself in a condition where I'm damaging my organs, damaging my body instead of producing life. So I find myself feeding on a lot of things that are not beneficial to my health. The same way in the spirit. If I don't feed on things like the word of God, worship music, listen to sermons, read the Bible, I'm causing damage to my spiritual heart. So I'm speaking to more than just medical heart issues, but spiritual and emotional heart issues. These conditions come out of ignoring the spectrum of heart's experience in life, including loss, grief, sorrow, joy, peace, and contentment. So I ignore these different sim symptoms and signs that are warning me that something's wrong with my heart posture, something's wrong with my heart condition. I'm damaging myself. These heart conditions arise coming out of people neglecting the tending of their hearts. So I neglect the condition of my heart when it's warning me of sorrow, it's warning me of disappointment, it's warning me of pain, it's warning me of hurt, lack of joy, sorrow, lack of peace, not content, anger, all these things fester when I feed on the things of the world, not the things of God. When we pay attention to the life of, of our hearts, of our hearts, we allow healthy self-love to make, in a way, our lives. So if I pay attention to the heart's condition and allow the Spirit of God to give me wisdom on how to fix my heart's condition, I'm allowing a healthy self-love to fill my heart. Because so many have not been loved properly, they have no reverence for love let alone healthy love to love themselves. So we ignore this issue and move on in life, being separated from love. Paul talks about, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, about the method of love. If you hold on to the word of God, God would teach you how to love yourself, how to love other people, how to love your enemies, how to love those who mistreat you. He would teach you how to deal with the adversary through love. But when we ignore the warning signs, when God is trying to tell you that somebody's in your circle is a planning to assassinate your vision, planning to saturate, saturate, assassinate your purpose. And God is trying to tell you, pay attention. Get into prayer mode. Start consecrating. Seek in my face because somebody in your circle it's plotting for your demise. But instead, I feed on television. I feed on the things of the world. I ignore God's voice. I keep gratifying my flesh. So the things that keeps my heart conditioned weakened are the things that I love the most. So God says, if your heart conditions it's not lining with the spirit of the living God. You're allowing the enemy to damage your organs. <coughs> Excuse me. Anytime we allow a symptom to be magnified in our bodies and don't deal with it, it creates more issues in our organs. Just like if you have a migraine headache and you've been dealing with this for a while, and you don't go to the doctor, you might have an aneurysm. You don't know what's going on in your brain because you're not the doctor. You don't have the x-ray. However, when you pray and ask God, God, what is causing me to have this headache? It might be something you ate that caused you to have this headache. It might be something in it that you put in your body that caused you to have this different type of headache. And the Holy Spirit says, what you gotta do now is get in yourself the attitude of listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit and obeying his voice. The Holy Spirit has a way of going deep into the core of our hearts to find out what root cause of something that's going on wrong in my body. It's true. Before I found out I had cancer, I had a growth on my jaw, 
on the right side of my jaw. I was working in pest control. This is in 2015. And I asked God, what is it? I didn't get no answer. Until six months later, I noticed that the growth on my jaw started to multiply, became two. Then a week later, one started coming on this side of my jaw. Then start one got on my neck. And I said, Lord, what is it? <clears throat> so I went to the doctor. When it first started, I went to the doctor and the doctor said, oh, you got swollen lymph nodes. Don't worry about it. It's going to go away. But when it started multiplying, the Holy Spirit said, call the doctor and tell the doctor this thing has spread it to the other side of your neck and on your face. So I called the doctor. He sent me to the hospital to have a biopsy. When I got to the hospital, the nurse practitioner came into the room and she looked at me, looked at the spot on my jaw. Oh, there's a swollen lymph nodes. You'll be all right. Go home. So I left, went on back to work. The doctor calls, said, do you ever go to the emergency? Yes, I went. What happened? They sent me home. So there ain't nothing wrong with me. He said, oh, no, 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 no. You need to go back to the hospital. I'm going to call them right now. You need to stop what you're doing. Go back to the hospital. And I'm going to have this doctor keep you. And when you get there, tell them the doctor that sent you wants you to be kept in the hospital for a biopsy. I did just what the doctor instructed me. So when I was admitted in the hospital that same day, which is um, December 2015, and the Holy Spirit, I was lying in the bed at midnight. The Holy Spirit spoke to me because I prayed. I said, God, what is it? What's going on in my body? Holy Spirit said, you got cancer. I said, okay. I said, what do I need to do? The Lord spoke to me. So I want you to get a book that has health and healing scriptures in it. And I said, Lord, what is this book? And I started searching. Holy Spirit said, the book is called God's Promises to Men. Never heard that book. Never read that book. The Holy Spirit, I had a tablet, navigated me to find the right book on my tablet that very night at midnight. And at midnight, I found this book, looked in the book, and found the health and healing scriptures just as God prescribed the medicine for me to take. I began to read those scriptures, pray those scriptures, trust God that those scriptures will manifest in my body. And one of the scriptures, the Lord said, you think yourself well, you'll be well. And I said, okay, God, what is going on? And the Lord says, you have cancer, but you will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. You can't tell me the Holy Spirit can't talk to you and tell you what to do when you're in a dire situation. So the heart condition, if I didn't listen to the Holy Spirit and stayed in pride and said, oh, I'm all right, I ain't going to listen to this doctor, I'm going to go on by my life, that thing would have spread through my body and probably would have killed me. But because of my sensitiveness to the voice of the Holy Spirit, I heard God tell me what to do, and I did it. The following heart condition begins to arise as a result. They work in stages. When we, get, when we begin at one stage, but if the diagnosis is ignored, we move further along until we end up at the last stage. Because so many people have not been properly loved, they have no reference for love, let, let alone healthy love for themselves. Because we ignore it, we can't receive the love of God. So God speaks to us, right? I'm going to go a little further. Typically, typically, people do not end up in the office until they are at the last stage. How many times you had a condition in your body and your body, your body gave you warning signs, it gave you signals that something not right with your body? And you thought, oh, it's going to be okay. I'm just going to ignore this. I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast. This is going to go away. Some things don't go away through prayer and fasting. Some things go away by listening to the voice of the doctor. God uses medicine sometimes to heal you, but because we're so spiritually minded, we know earthly good. So we we'll wait to the last stage when the doctor says, if you hadn't came in sooner, we could have caught this disease or we could have caught this symptom. We could have did something with this to go on your body. But because I ignored the warning sign, now things progress. I got worse. 
when it could have been avoided. If I had listened in the first place when the Holy Spirit said go to the doctor. They have lived for years without tending to life of the heart's condition and cultivating a love relationship with God, themselves and others. So we ignore the warning signs. We ignore the love of God. Therefore, we damage our own heart's condition. We damage the love God wants to have to cultivate in relationships. And we damage ourselves and other people. Number one, broken heart, broken heart. This is where it all begins. Everyone on planet on the planet has a broken heart to some degree because we are all broken to some degree. No one has received love or given perfect, perfectly given a love perfectly. The quicker we can identify and we can carry a broken heart, the quicker God can address these areas that needs greater revelation of love. So the quicker I want to say, God, I need your help. I need you to demonstrate your love to me. Show me what's wrong me, God. I need to be right in your presence. God will speak to you. When you identify, God, my heart has been broken. My heart has been torn. I've been hurt. God, I need you. God will show you quicker on what to do, how to get out of your situation. Self-love cannot be experienced when we leave a broken heart unhealed. I found this to be a very profound statement. It's a true statement. Self-love cannot be experienced when we have a broken, unhealed heart. The broken heart is a condition that rises when those who were supposed to love us did not. Either they released harmful action against us or they neglected to act in a loving way that you needed. So because I ignored it, I got hurt. Most people carry a broken heart because they were not given what they needed. This becomes difficult to see unless we get a reverence for what we did not have. In other words, I get a revelation. I begin to see what I'm missing. For instance, the majority of people on planet have no memory of their earthly father saying the word, I love you. Yet without knowing this was important, people will live without letting that get healed and resolved. Because I never was told I love you by my parent, or I never was told by my father or my mother, because I never allowed anybody to know what was going on in my heart, I never experienced true love, I walk around with a limp of the or unknown origin. In other words, without love, it'll cripple you. The enemy will afflict you and cripple you from experiencing true love because of a damaged, broken heart. And God is saying tonight, you got to allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. In order to move to the, the level of cure, being cured, you got to recognize the symptoms and the signs that have broken your heart. Number two, a fearful heart. <coughs> Any area of a brokenness makes room for fear to enter in. Any area of brokenness leaves room for fear to enter in. Insecurity is the land where fear loves to dwell. Fear loves to dwell in insecurity. It loves to dwell in brokenness. Therefore, fear comes in and causes your heart to be festered with a lot of anger and misery. Every area of insecurity and brokenness has a work of fear attached to it. You need to write that down. If you're taking notes, every area of insecurity and brokenness has a work for fear to attach to it. Those with fearful hearts become trained to avoid any past pain from reoccurring. Fear sets up a barrier. Fear sets up a wall. Fear puts you in a box and it allows God's love to not come in. The enemy uses fear as a tactic to torment you, to keep you from walking in the freedom God has for you. Love has such a powerful effect 
that it actually casts out fear. Love and fear displace each other. When I allow the love of God to come out, so the word tells us, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind, right? So if God gave us love, power, and a sound mind, guess what? Love cast out fear. When I am neck deep in fear, it drives out my ability to sense and experience the power of love. When I'm neck deep in fear, it drives out my awareness, my sensitiveness, my ability to receive the love of God because I allow fear to come into my heart. Even in the last days, Jesus said, men's hearts would fail because of fear. Fear would tag team on broken hearts to keep us focused on our past hurts as a story for our future. Fear would tag team on a broken heart to keep you bound, keep you in bondage, keep you focused on the past hurts and let that make, make you think that's your future going to be like. Number three, angry heart. As fear remains intact, the stress and insecurity adds on another layer on top of fear, anger. If I don't deal with the root cause of a broken heart, the root cause of insecurity, fear, and pain, it adds another layer on top of that called anger. Paul spoke to the church at Ephesus. So let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither be thou angry. Why? Because I don't deal with the anger issue and I got insecurity. I got a broken heart. I've been messed up. I've been wounded. I've been scarred. It keeps me bound. I'll never see myself the way God sees me in himself. The anger comes to in defense to our broken heart and keeps anyone away who might show a potential threat to us. How many times have you seen somebody angry and they got this defense wall about themselves? They're always ready to lash out at somebody who speaks wrong to them. They're always ready to retaliate when they're mistreated. They're always offended easily. Always argumental. Always ready to fight somebody who feel like a threat to them. That's a broken heart. That's a heart that's insecure. That's a heart in bondage. And God is saying tonight, if you are one of those people who allow yourself to be filled with insecurity and you have angry issues, you need to let go of it. You need to repent. You need to ask God to cleanse your mind and cleanse your heart. Because that's a spirit of the enemy. Lord, rebuke that spirit tonight off your life and off your mind and off your heart. Because the enemy knows how to keep you in bondage if you allow him to do that. All anger stems from unresolved brokenness. All anger stems from unresolved brokenness. Very little of anger has anything to do with the current situation or subject. It is always more to do with the past wounds that have never been addressed. You've been hurt in your past years and you've been going on majority of your life as if nothing ever happened to you. But deep within the core of your heart, certain individuals come around you, your thought begins to reflect back to how that person scarred you, how they wounded you, how they hurt you, how they broke you, how you was not treated right, how you was unloved, how you was abused, how you was, how you was wounded. God says tonight that unresolved brokenness, it causes the spirit of the enemy to fill your heart with anger, which will cause you in turn to find yourself in a defeated life. So many attempts to use anger management as a solution, yet that it's all end up doing nothing but attempting to manage it. You can't manage your anger. It's nothing you can do on your own accord. You don't have the power of your own strength. 
You can't fix it yourself. The only one who has the ability to cast out the spirit of fear, insecurity, anger, and brokenness and heal you is the Holy Spirit through the blood of the Lamb. Jesus paid the price on the cross. He went through the worst suffering you and I can ever experience upon himself to where it took him to the death of the cross. He gave himself up for you and I that we can be free. Then why do we keep on reverting back to the past things that scarred us? And we pull the scabs off of it just like you fall and scrape your knee or scrape your arm or bump your head and you get this wound. And it start healing, get a scar on it, and you just pick at it. Just keep picking at it. What's going to happen? It's going to start bleeding. Pus going to come out of it. Why? Because it's starting to get infected. The enemy wants to infect you with the sin issue of doubt, fear, and unbelief from trusting God's word to heal you. But you have the power to break that spirit by surrendering, yielding, and releasing it into the hands of the Lord and allow God to come in here in your heart to bind your brokenness and heal your wounds. And guess what? God would do it. Number four, the hopeless heart. The hopeless heart. When we walk through life, the hopeless heart, when we walk through life overcompensating for our brokenness, and serving our fears every day, we get exhausted. I know I did. You can only be angry for so long until it hits an exhausting stage, depressing, sets in. So depression sets in. Anger becomes low. And irritability becomes high. Ooh, that's a good one. So if I overcompensate for my brokenness, and then I have excuses and reasons why I'm broken, and start serving fear every day, not trusting God's word, not standing in faith, doing the opposite of what God tells me to do. Anger's in my heart. I become exhausted. Depression sets in. I be, my energy levels start being low. I'm, I'm tired all the time. I just want to lay around, feel worthless, feel inadequate, feel like nobody cares, nobody loves me. I, I'll never be any better. I've always been in this state of mind. I'm going to always have these wandering thoughts. I become irritable. So I get irritated if anyone comes to contradict the way I feel. So I'm irritated. So I allow the spirit of the enemy to keep me in a state of defense. I'm always defensive instead of allowing God to bring me to a place of humility where he can heal me, deliver me from my, my, my irritability, deliver me from my depression, deliver me from my anxiety, deliver me from my stress, all the stuff that I allow to settle in my heart are the very tools the enemy uses against you to break down your defense from trusting God. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and find safety. So if God says in his word that we can find our security in his presence, then what's hindering us? Ourselves. Myself, thinking about myself, Dwelling on myself, feeding on myself, all the negative stuff about myself. So when I look into the mirror, all I see is the worthlessness. I see the mess ups, the hang ups, the bad habits, the strongholds, the problems, the issues in my life. That's all I see. Because I'm blinded by self. But when the Holy Spirit comes in, he takes the blinders off. He begins to reveal to you the sacrifice that was paid for your inadequacies, your failures, your shortcomings, your problems, your issues of life. He paid the price for your freedom. And all you gotta do is receive it by faith. It's a free gift. You can't pay for it. You can't go buy it nowhere. You just gotta believe by faith that it's already yours. He who the Son is set free is free indeed. Hope deferred Make the heart sick. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. This is the spiritual sickness that can even lead to physical sickness. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. 
A spiritual condition not dealt with can be, lead to a physical sickness. And it will cause your lifeline to slowly begin to dry up. You haven't seen somebody who drank so much, it's like their skin got dark, they start withering away, and every time you see them, they're worse and worse and worse in their condition because their lifeline is depreciating. Hope is a lifeline for our lives when it seems distant, out of reach, or delayed too long. We suffer the effects of that. People at this stage have neglected to face their brokenness. If you refuse to face your brokenness, your fears, your anger, your lifeline is starting to depreciate. But the Holy Spirit has the ability to restore through hope in the word of God. By trusting in God's ability, standing on his word, and God has the power to reverse the curse in your life. The enemy wants to curse you. The enemy wants to destroy you. The enemy wants to defeat you. But he has no power until you let him come in and take over your power. Jesus told the disciples, he said, Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's Luke 10, 19. Luke 10, 19. He said he can, nothing can hurt you unless you give the enemy a power. Your lifeline cannot dry up unless you give the enemy a power. So people at this stage neglect to face their brokenness. Or they have no grid on how to overcome. Now their lens on life carries a lot of negativity and synchronism. When hope is deferred, we feel that it has delayed too long. Good things are out of reach for me. So if hope is deferred, I don't, I'm losing my faith in God. I'm losing my trust in God. I'm losing my dependence on God. So I'm, I'm starting to see all the bad stuff. And anything good, I don't think it will ever happen to me. All I see is gloom and doom and destruction in my life. I remember when I was younger, I used to drink, drink a lot. I, I was a drunkard, partying all the time, all this stuff. And I felt like God didn't love me. felt like God didn't care for me. So I tried suicide many occasions. And everything I tried to do did not work. Hope was deferred because I took my eyes off of my focus. Hear what I'm saying? Follow me here. Anytime your focus is distracted from looking at the Lord through his word, through the lens of faith, all you see is your failure. When the Holy Spirit sent people in my life to minister hope to me, to minister faith to me, to minister the word to me, it gave me a new insight to see myself the way God sees me. So I want to encourage you tonight. Number five, hard heart, hard heart. At this stage, even hope deferred, can be healed by walking through each of the previous stages and releasing the fear and the anger we have towards others and ourselves. So if you've got an offense towards anybody, you need to let it go because that will hinder you from being healed and delivered. But hope deferred through healing can release us, release us from fear and anger, insecurity, resentment, offenses, all the stuff we hold on to that's not of God can be delivered by the Spirit of God. When we neglect this, we develop another dangerous condition, a hard heart. If I neglect the Holy Spirit when he's trying to heal me from offenses, heal me from, from uh, trying to retaliate, heal me from trying to get even with other people, hold on to the things they've done to me, how I was hurt years ago and I never got healed from it because I never let go of the, of the way that person treated me, it begins to produce a hardened heart, a callous heart, a rebellious heart, a stubborn heart. And God is saying, if you are in that condition, you need to wake up and allow the Spirit of God to show you your heart that you can be healed and delivered by the Spirit of the living God. A callous heart forms around the heart. So when it's a passionate message of freedom is delivered, the eyes are veiled and the hearing is dull. So when the Holy Spirit comes along and says, you know what? I got the solution to your callous heart. I got the solution 
to your brokenness. I got the solution to all the things that hurt you. And you resist them and allow that heart to be hardened. The Holy Spirit can't help you. He can't deliver you. He can't set you free because now you're dull. I don't hear God's voice. My eyes are blinded from truth. So I put a veil over my eyes because of rebellion, because of my stubbornness, my pridefulness, my haughtiness, my, my running away from God, not listening to him and obeying him. Hard hearts don't hear encouragement or hope anymore. Hardened hearts do not hear encouragement. Hardened hearts do not have hope anymore because I allow myself to be destroyed by the enemy in my mind. But check this out. Just because you may feel like it's hopeless, you feel like your life is about to end, the Holy Spirit has the power to come into your life so you know what? I got a chisel. I can chip away that callous heart. I can take away that stony heart and give you a heart of flesh after the word of God, which is God's spirit. I can reverse the curse on your life. I can replenish you with the things of the Holy Ghost to empower you to live in freedom. Only if you want it. It takes the divine work of the Holy Spirit and a person's willingness for a hard heart. Guess what? open up. If you're willing, the Holy Spirit will come in. He will open up your heart. He begin to feed you with the fruit of the Spirit. Starting in Galatians chapter 5 verse 21. He'll feed you with the things that are beneficial for your heart's condition, your heart posture to realign back up with the things of God. He has the power to take away the alcoholic addiction, the drug addiction, pornography addiction, the lustful addiction, the sexual sin addiction, the homosexuality addiction, the lesbianism. Doesn't matter what your condition is, he has the power to come in and deliver you from all of that stuff. The past hurts, the past wounds, the resentment, all those things that have been dormant in your heart and expose it in order to clean it out. Number six, numb or checked out heart. Numb or checked out heart. That means I just gave up. I'm checking out life. Getting to this stage is deadly. All the people I have worked for over 20 years, the numb and checked out heart has been one of the most challenging in health. When the heart is engaged, the possibility of endless change, when it, it is th at this stage, it can seem nearly impossible to break through. So when you get to this point in your life, you feel numb to the Holy Ghost. You can't feel nothing. You can't hear nothing. You can't see nothing. You numb to the reality of life. All you see is gloom and doom and destruction. When you are done checked out in your spirit, that's when you're saying, God, I'm done. Ain't no, recent, no use of living. They're going to take my life to let me die. The numb and checked out heart has also become more common condition today. Although previous heart condition listed are dangerous when it's unchecked, this stage is lethal. When I get to the place where I feel numb and I feel checked out, it's a lethal condition to be. It's a deadly condition. You can minister to a hundred tons of nuclear love from heaven, but you would never still get nothing. Very little engagement, very little heart connection. You can see it in their eyes. The light on, the lights are on, but no one's home. You know how many times we, we, we leave our house and we say we leave the light on, to let people think I'm at home. We grew up like that when I was growing up. My parents would do it all the time. We get to go out of town or go 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 to church. And it's nighttime, they leave lights on in the house to discourage burglars from coming to the house. A lot of people in the body of Christ are sitting in the church house, their lights are on, but they're not there. They're not checked out. My body is physically in the church, but my mind is somewhere else because I'm not checked out. And that's lethal because I'm not hearing the voice of the Spirit. I'm not hearing correction. I'm not hearing reproof. I'm not receiving God's love for me. 
So I done checked out. Trying to help, try to help a key in areas of, the, of their life and they checked out. They may present in their room, but absent emotionally. They may present to be in the room, but emotionally absent. I'm gone. People at this stage have either given up tending to their hearts or never did so in the beginning with. Those who have become weary with their hurt, their pain, their anger, their fears, often slides into a place of numbness. I'm gonna read this again. People at this stage have either become, people at this stage have either given up tending to their hearts or never did to begin with. Those who have become weary with their hurts, their pain, their anger, their fears, often slide into a place of numbness. The pain becomes so unbearable, the comfort that, that checking out becomes a programmed way of living. So I've been hurt so long, wounded so bad, it's unbearable. It became, becomes a normal way of life. They go to work, they pay their bills, and they say thank you, but inside they are numb. In fact, a, we have a numb heart disconnected culture. Millions of, millions of people watch a show called The Walking Dead, which I believe is a reflection of the condition taking place in the hearts of people. They don't see their need for heart healing and they walk around like zombies. You got a lot of church folk walking zombies. Go to church 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years going through the cycle, going through the motion, but are walking zombies. No one's there. They're dead. They have not been resurrected. They walk around dead. Quite often, they don't even care. They wander around in life without ever tending to what matters the most. This numbness drives everything. The rise of mental illness goes back to a lack of love. The body knows when love is not present, when someone lacks proper love in their hearts. Their physical, their physical, their, their psychology that psychology can recognize the signal and break down. This is one of the reasons why I believe we're not seeing a dent made in the world in the medical health. People's bodies are breaking down because they feel separated from loving relationship with God. Themselves and others, they live like an emotional prison. The problem is they checked out so they have no ability, <coughs> excuse me, they have no ability to recognize that inwardly they're dying. So when you check out, you use your, you lose your sensibility to recognize the spirit of God that's in your life. So you allow the enemy to have habitation in your mindset to keep you walking like a zombie. And tonight God is saying, he came to give us life and that more abundantly. The thief come nigh, but the kill still destroy, right? But it's an I am come that you might have life and that more abundantly. So I want to tell you tonight that you're not in a hopeless state of mind. You're not in a place where God can't bring life unto you. God told Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 38 to prophesy to the valley of dry bones. God is speaking tonight to dry bones. If you're one of those in those heart conditions that I described, the broken heart, the fearful heart, the angry heart, the hopeless heart, the hardened heart, and the numb or checked out heart, I come to tell you tonight that the Holy Spirit is here to give you hope to set you free. In the book of Revelation, I booked the bait of Satan. It says, in the book of Revelation, Jesus addressed the church and Laodicea by first telling them how he saw how they saw themselves as rich, wealthy, in need of nothing. Then by exposing their true condition, wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. And that's Revelations chapter 3, verse 14 through 20. Revelations chapter 3, verse 14 through 20. They had mistaken their financial strength for spiritual strength. They had, they, they had pride that he had their true condition. 
Many are this way today. They do not see the true conditions of the heart, just as I was, was unable to see the resentment I carried towards ministers. I had convinced myself I was not hurt. Jesus told the Laodiceans how to get out of the, their deception by gold and see their true conditions. By gold and see their true conditions. First, Jesus first, Jesus first instructed for breaking free from deception was to buy me gold refined by fire. Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. Refined gold is soft and pliable, free from corrosion or other substances. When gold is mixed with other materials, copper, iron, nickel, and so on, it becomes hard, less pliable, and more corrosive. This mixture is called an alloy. The higher the percentage of foreign materials, the harder the gold becomes. Conversely, the lower the percentage of alloy, the softer and more flexible. So if gold, God is saying buy gold and have a, a, a pliable heart, a softened heart, a heart where he's able to come in to minister to you, you have to allow the Spirit of God to show you yourself. It's going to take you getting to the place where you recognize, God, I need you to come into my heart. To show me myself, show me what's wrong with me, help me to see myself by the Spirit of God that I can hear your voice. Recognize what's impure in my life that you have the agent to purge it out. Immediately we see the parallel. A pure heart is like pure gold, soft, tender, and pliable. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13 states that Hearts are hardened through deceitful of sins, deceitfulness of sin. If we do not deal with an offense, it will produce more fruit of sin, such as bitterness, anger, and resentment. This added substance hardens our hearts just as the alloy hardens gold. This reduces and removes tenderness, creating a loss of sensitivity. Of sensitivity. We are hindered in our ability to hear God's voice and our accuracy to see, see the darkness. This is a perfect setting for deception. So if you are one of those who don't have a pure heart, a pliable heart, a soft heart, a gentle heart, you're setting yourself up for deception to settle in, to deceive yourself, to thinking everything is okay when everything's not okay. So we're going to stop right here. And we're going to pick this up next week. The cure. The cure. I had to, had to get this out tonight. Concerning the heart's conditions. Because that goes in. With what we talked about last week. In order to receive cure. We got to identify. What I need to be cured from. Until God shows me. What type of heart that I have. I will never recognize the signs and the wonders and the symptoms that are holding me from back from receiving freedom, healing, and deliverance. Until I can see what God needs to show me about myself, the type of mindset that I have, I will never be free from bondage. So Lord, tonight I thank you for this word of oh God. I pray that it brings conviction to all of our hearts, to want to change. If we're argumental, if we're one who easily offended, if we're one that has a stubborn heart, a prideful heart, a bitter heart, an angry heart, a miserable heart, Father, take it out. Take away everything that's not like you in us, God, that we have nothing from, from, from preventing us from receiving healing and deliverance. That's accepting your word to change our minds and change our lives. That you would be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, I want you to do me a favor. I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. I believe that God is changing somebody's heart tonight. You may have a cluttered heart. And what I mean by that, 
a heart that's filled with all types of junk that's not of God. You're always backbiting. You're always gossiping. You're always talking about people. You're hating on other people. You're offended easily. God is saying tonight, he's changing it. He's healing it, that broken heart. And he's binding your wounds. So I want you to pray this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask the Lord to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly, that you cleanse me and restore me, refresh me, revive me. You change me. Give me your heart. Take away the stony heart and give me a heart of flesh which symbolizes your Holy Spirit. That you fill me with the Holy Ghost and the power and the ability to be healed from my brokenness, delivered from my pain, and be set free on the inside, that I can have the, the ability and the power to come out of my dark place. I can see what you see, hear what you hear, that my life will be the better for it from this day forward. And I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You prayed that prayer. God is doing a great work in you. He's changing you from the inside out. And the more you surrender, you have a pliable heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. God is doing something awesome. In Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Titus chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. It says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness. You know what's in your life is ungodly? God said the grace of God that brought us salvation has come to you. And it teaches you to deny all ungodliness and worldly lust. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That we should live soberly and be alert, be humble, have a spirit of God in you, self-control, righteously, and godly in this present world. Verse 13, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So I want to close with that scripture tonight to encourage you. Here's your answer to your heart's condition. Receive the word of God by faith. Because the word teaches us. It navigates. It directs your steps. It orders you in the right plan and the purpose and the vision God has for your life to change you, to make you better, to make you fruitful. That in the kingdom of God, that you will bear fruit in everything you do and your fruit will forever be established in the heavenly kingdom as we look for the glorious appearing of the great God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who's soon to come. So again, I thank everyone for tuning in tonight. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask a question. If you got one tonight, any questions, anyone? Before we get ready to go, if you got any questions, feel free to ask your questions right now. And I tell you, allow this word to change your mind, change your heart, change your heart posture, change your condition, make you pliable, make you have a heart condition to receive from God. It's a guarantee. God will come in. He will sit down on the throne of your heart as Lord and Savior. The Bible says when Christ died, we died. When he rose again, we rose with him into a new life. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven in majesty on high. So we're seated with Christ 
in a place of authority. We're seated in Christ in a place of honor. So freedom comes when you know who you are in Christ Jesus. If you know what Christ has done for you, receive it by faith. It's a guarantee that God will set you free from the inside out to make you a better person, change your attitude, change your mindset, change your heart, change your life to be more and more like him as an imitator of Christ every day of your life. So Lord, tonight I thank you for this word. I thank you, Lord God, for those who came on tonight and those who may hear this word later on today, oh God, even later in the week, that it will be ministering to their hearts to bring change in the hearer that hears this word. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. And we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Again, I thank you all for joining in tonight. May God continue to bless and enrich your souls and change your life for the better. Lord says the same. We will resume next week, the six o'clock hour, and continue our study from the bait of Satan, living free from the deadly traps and offense with the subject, the cure. The cure. We talked about the true heart's condition. We're going to talk about continuation with the cure. Because God has a remedy for all of us that can set us free from the inside out. You all be blessed. Until next week. Shalom, well-being, prosperity, satisfaction be to you from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Have a good night. Amen. Thank you, sis. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. All right. Anyone else have a comment or question tonight? Any question before we go? I don't want to leave without any questions or anything not answered. But you all stay encouraged. I love teaching these lessons. I love them because God is, is really doing a change in my life personally. There's some things I've been believing God to break off my mindset, and off my heart. And the more I've been teaching these lessons, the more I'm taking a personal examination of myself, see myself the way God wants me to see myself, and not allow, not allow the enemy to imprison me with the things of the past. That's a message for somebody else. Don't allow the enemy to imprison you with the things of the past. Because the Son of God has come to bring you freedom and set you free from your prison state of mind and give you a life that's full of the glory of God. And I guarantee when Christ comes in, everything has to change. You all have a good night. God bless.